No. Hoffa day, everyone. Nestor Lecanto here, and it's my pleasure to welcome as our guest today a former colleague of mine from many years ago and now a state senator for the great state of Hawaii, Glenn Wakai. Half a day, Glenn. Half a day, Nestor. Thanks for hiring me 30 years ago. <laughs> Has it been that long? Oh, my God. 1990s when I was in Guam. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Love the place. Oh, time flies. Well, you've yes, done indeed. very well. You've done very well since then. I'm very, very proud of you, sir. Well, under your tutelage. I mean, with the high, the evolution of high-definition TV, all the ugly guys had to go find another job. So only the handsome guys like you are left over in the business. So people in Guam are lucky to have your knowledge base there. <laughs> oh, God. Thank you so much. Hey, so the reason um, we're talking today is I wanted to get a perspective from Hawaii uh, since... Um, we share the same type of economy, uh, very tourism uh, uh, reliant. Um, can you just set the, kind of set the table and tell us uh, uh, where we, uh, Hawaii is right now and explain what uh, Governor Ige has, has ordered? Well, we are putting public safety and health before tourism, but uh, the tourism economy is just devastated. We have uh, 60,000 people in Hawaii who are unemployed. Uh, keep in mind, just maybe a month ago, that figure was just under 10,000 folks. So we've seen a dramatically uh, rising increase in the number of people who are unemployed here. Because as you said, uh, our tourism, our, our economic base is tourism. One out of every four jobs in Hawaii is related to, to tourism. So we're seeing the devastating economic effects of it. On a public health standpoint, uh, knock on wood, we have not gotten our first death here in Hawaii, but we do have uh, 220, as of yesterday, people who are COVID positive here in the state of Hawaii. Uh, we're in the containment mode, which to me, we should have been in the defense mode a month ago, but uh, well, that's water under the bridge. We didn't do enough, in my opinion, to keep visitors out who were carrying the COVID virus here. And so we're scrambling now. We just uh, last week had a mandatory quarantine for visitors who come to the state of Hawaii. Um, and keep in mind, about 35,000 people usually come on a daily basis to Hawaii. Yesterday, that figure was down to 800 people. Out of those 800, 120 were visitors. Most of them are kind of locals coming home. But only 120 visitors from 35,000 last year on this particular day. So you can see the dramatic downfall a dramatic uh, diminishing of visitors here, which on one side is bad for the economy, but on the plus side is good in our efforts to try and provide some kind of containment for this dreadful illness. Yeah, as you mentioned, there's so many people that are out of work uh, in Hawaii right now. What is the government doing to help them? What are some of the services? Well, one good thing about Hawaii is that we had a pretty full unemployment insurance fund, around $800 million was there. So now in these kind of rainy day times, we have that to rely on. But you might be familiar with the federal stimulus package that went out yesterday, uh, passed, uh, signed by the president yesterday. I mean, that's supposed to bring in for Hawaii $1.2 billion in uh, resources, not all for economic and, and unemployment, but $1.5 billion in society tidy sum of money for us to get through this next few months. And how, how are the people reacting? Are they, they paying attention to the uh, shelter in place um, edicts that are, have been out? Uh, have, have they generally been following? Uh, well, you I would guesstimate that 90% of the public are sheltering in place. It's a beautiful day here in Hawaii. Terrible day for me to be stuck at home, but I've been stuck at home for almost two weeks now. So a vast majority of the public is sheltering in place. We do have some knuckleheads out there that are actually going out and still gathering and partying with their friends. But uh, we have uh, criminalized that type of behavior. So in fact, two days ago, uh, there were three individuals that were arrested. Uh, many people were also given citations. So the government is trying its best to enforce the mandate to shelter in place and stay home. How about in terms of uh, testing? Um, have you has the state been able to get a handle on um, you know how many uh, people and how 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 the uh, the spread is going? And uh, are there any projections for when you might reach peak and finally see the, see the uh, number of cases go down? Uh, let me just sorry, I'm coming through my health department statistics from today, and 
as of as of yesterday, we've tested 5,747 individuals in Hawaii. That's about 4% of the population. Uh, by comparison, Korea tested 7% of their entire population. So we want to test more. The, the scary part about this, this, this illness is that we're fighting an invisible enemy. And for us to fight the enemy, we got to know who's carrying. And so whether it's Hawaii or any place on the planet, Guam as well, you got to test people to find out uh, how to respond. So we're trying to increase the amount of testing here, but as in any place on this planet, getting those proper testing equipment is a challenge. How about your um, PPE? I know one of the priorities probably um, in Hawaii, as it is here in Guam, is to protect the uh, front line, the health uh, service providers. Um, how are you guys situated for um, PPEs? Uh, we have limited resources knock on wood so far we have not been overwhelmed we're looking at if you're familiar with aloha stadium uh putting kind of a mash setup there at aloha stadium heaven forbid the day comes when it's going to get out of control like it is in new york um so we're we're as every other healthcare facility across the planet in short supply of ventilators respirators basic masks um but we're, we're scrambling we're just luck luckily guam and and Hawaii's isolation in this particular case works to our advantage because we're not seeing the rampant wildfire across America that the continental U.S. is facing. But by the same token, if and when it does infiltrate into Guam or Hawaii, it's going to be super hard to get rid of that illness as well. So now both Guam and Hawaii have some level of breathing space to kind of plan and prepare, and we should be doing so. I know it's a little early because we are still both of both of our places are still focused on you know bring uh, the, the health aspect of this, but eventually this will go away. Um, uh, what is uh, Hawaii doing in preparation for recovering um, from the economic impact of the coronavirus uh, crisis? Uh, for the immediate uh, future, we're trying to work with landlords to kind of uh, provide some kind of deferred uh, lease payments for restaurants retailers and, and businesses uh hopefully that the community will come together and the landlords will see that uh, a bankrupt tenant provides no future revenue sources but uh, trying to mitigate that um, as we talked a little bit about unemployment opportunities i think the federal stimulus money will come into play hawaii itself as a state government doesn't have a lot at its disposal in terms of giving out grants uh, we have a few dollars but not enough to shore up our entire economy but after that we want to I think this is a lesson learned both for Guam and Hawaii on the pitfalls of having an economy entirely based on tourism and the military. So I see this as a great opportunity for Hawaii to pivot, to go into the innovation economy and be a little bit less reliant on tourism jobs in the future and pouring some money, resources, policy, regulatory changes to enhance and embrace the innovation economy. And you are the master of the segue. So this is a good segue to get into some ideas that you have for Guam. Yes, I, I look at Guam. I mean, I, I chair economic development for the state of Hawaii. And as I kind of figure out, like, how does Hawaii create an innovation economy? It needs three things. It needs one, infrastructure. It needs workforce. And it needs capital. Uh, Hawaii is struggling with all three. But on the on the infrastructure, I look at the at the broadband maps, and Guam is far ahead of Hawaii in terms of infrastructure. I have uh, looked on a map, and I don't know if you can see it, but this is the number of broadband sites going into Guam today. There are ten broadband sites. Oops, there are ten broadband sites. By comparison, Hawaii has fifteen, and I understand GTA is going to build four more in the next year. So Guam has a full robust amount of technology coming to your islands and from what i see with gta and gita's uh, plans it's about maybe data centers getting a google of amazon there which i don't know if that's probably going to happen but what i don't see happening in the discussion in guam is how do i cultivate technology firms how do i do co-working spaces look at us you and i if you're comfortable doing uh, this teleconferencing People are going to not have to go to a brick and mortar uh, facility in the future. Co-working spaces are going to be a part of the future. I don't know if Guam has co-working spaces, but I do know that Guam has a lot of infrastructure that a lot of other Pacific Islands would be envious of. Thank you very much for the ideas. And I hope um, our leaders will be listening to you and uh, 
take some action and, and see how we, far we can take that. But um, hey, sir, it's been very good to talk to you. I appreciate your time and you stay safe over there in the beautiful state of Hawaii. Okay, you too. Thanks for the opportunity, Nestor. Thank you, Jason, right. as well. Take care. Aloha. There you have it. That's uh, Senator Glenn Hoy from the beautiful state of Hawaii, a uh, former KUAM colleague, uh, joining us for our uh, interview today. Nestor LeContre reporting, KUAM News. Aloha.